ways before Christmas, so I guess I can say Merry Christmas. Oh, how Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Yes. And, you know, Christmas is one of the biggest holidays worldwide. You know, but it means so many different things to so many different people. And so we have so many different symbols for the season. You know, there are lights, there are trees, stockings, Santas, nativity scenes, songs of joy and peace and goodwill, candy cane, mistletoes, just, and just a whole host of decorations and symbols are used to celebrate at this time of the year. And either we find it overwhelming or we just get so familiar that we just nonchalant about it. You know, for some, it's just a winter holiday. But for the Christian, this is the time that we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hence the name Christmas, the Mass of Christ. You know, and all the many things associated with Christmas makes it one of the most multifaceted seasons. But the awesome, sacred story of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is even more multifaceted. And so this morning... I would like to use some of these symbols of Christmas to tell the story of Christmas and to demonstrate that this is a multifaceted season, not just physically, but also spiritually. So the story of Christmas is one of humble beginnings. You know, we're, we're familiar with the Christmas carol, Away in a Manger, No Crib for a Bed, The Little Lord Jesus Lay Down His Sweet Head. And these words were inspired from Luke. Uh, 2 verse 1 through 7 it was when Joseph and Mary went up to, to, the, to Bethlehem to register for the census and Mary was engaged to Joseph and she was with the child she was expecting Jesus and um, when she was there she gave birth to him and wrapped him in cloths and she laid him in a manger or feeding trough so who is this Jesus who was born in such humble surroundings and placed in a feeding trough for a crib, for a, 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 you know. Well, even before the beginning of the earth, there was a pre-existence in heaven. And in John 1, 1, it says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made. And then in verse 14 it says that the Word came to dwell among us. You see, Jesus was the Word. He was with God and He was God. And this mighty God, He took off His glory. He took off His majesty. He took off His splendor and He came to dwell with us. But the crazy thing about it is He wasn't even born in a palace where He should have been born. He was born in a basically a manger with the animals. You know, scholars say that he was probably born on the ground floor where the animals were kept. But think about that. The mighty God, the glorious God who created all things, visible and invisible, he was born with the animals. You know, and Isaiah says that he is to be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. He came to earth to be God with us. Of course, he was always with us in the sense that he was creator, he was a provider, our sustainer, he guided us, he blesses us. But on that first Christmas day, God with us took on a whole new meaning. Because in the person of Jesus, God came to be with us as he was born. You know, and I have here one of the symbols of Christmas, and that's the nativity scene right here. And to me, this is a representation of the humility of Jesus. He gave up everything to come to this lowly earth in the lowliest of places. He came as a helpless babe. The nativity scene is a reminder of his, this humility. So this Christmas, let us have that humble mind of Jesus. Let us walk in humility with him. You know, if we all had that humble spirit, we wouldn't have the turmoil and the chaos and the That's violence right. That's right. that we have in the world today. That's right. But again, why did he come? Why did he come? Why did he leave his majestic glory of heaven to be born down here in a stable? Well, the story of Christ
Christmas is a story of love, and it's symbolized by this heart, this little heart. You know, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. But he didn't just love, he so loved, he so loved that he sent Jesus to die for us. So he didn't want to condemn us, but he wanted to, to save the world through Jesus. And the whole, the triune God, the whole trinity, they were all in agreement because the Father loved, so he sent Jesus. And Jesus came, he was willing to come. And the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary as she became pregnant with Jesus. You know, um, on Facebook, I saw this really heartwarming story, and it was about a young man. When he was, uh, I don't remember how old he was, but he was, he was pretty young. And he was, uh, he was accused of a murder that he didn't commit, and he was sentenced to jail. And at the time, he was engaged to his high school sweetheart. And she knew he was innocent. And for, and for years, while he was in prison, she used to weekly drive many miles to visit him. And after about five years, she said, you know, um, he, he said to her, you know, just, just move on, move on. This life is not the life of you. I'm, I'm always going to be here. I'm in jail. So just move on. But she wouldn't. So eventually, he married her in jail. And, um, and she continued to visit him every week, making that long drive. She raised his child. She was actually carrying his child when, when um, he was imprisoned. And so she raised his child. And she raised two other children from a previous relationship. And this lady continued to support this man, not for 10 years, not for 15, not even 20, for 26 long years. She continued to support him until finally his case was reopened and the DNA evidence proved that he had absolutely nothing to do with the murder. He was finally released after 26 years and now they live happily ever after. You know, and I watched this and you know, you get all the comments, this was true love, this was real love, you know, when you see the comments on Facebook. And it was, it was an amazing story of love. But even as amazing as that story was, there is a love that's even more amazing. Right. You know, because it says that even while we were sinners, mm -hmm. even while we were still sinners, in Romans 5, 8, God demonstrated his own love towards us, that he was to die for us. You see, his kind of love is a love that's unconditional. You see, it loves even when we hate. It loves when we're indifferent to him. It loved us, this love, when we were still sinners. Even when they crucified Jesus and they spat on him, he still loved. Yeah. It's a love that passes all understanding. Oh, yeah. You know, so this Christmas, let this heart on the table here remind us of the love of God. And let us follow his example. Let's give some love away today. You know, John 13, 34 says, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another. So show someone, tell someone you love them this Christmas. The story of Christmas is also a story of sacrifice, symbolized by the cross. The beautiful Christmas cross that changes color. You see, Jesus came to be our substitute. He suffered on the cross for us so that we could be forgiven of our sin, that we could have freedom from sin and death. He purchased our salvation with his own blood. He sanctified us. He destroyed the enemy. And he's our high priest. And he did it all voluntarily with joy. You know, if you read Hebrews 2, 9 through 18, it talks about this. And you know, as you think about those tiny hands of the, of the babe in the manger, the tiny hands and the tiny feet. Yeah. You know, it was formed for the intention that one day that the nails would be driven through them. And his little body that was wrapped in those swaddling cloths that it says in the King James Version, one day a spear would thrust its side. Yeah. And when you think of his heart that pumped the blood, his heart will be broken for you and for me. Jesus was born to die. So we cannot fully celebrate the birth of Christ without also appreciating his death, his broken body, his shed blood for us. 
So this Christmas, let us think of a way that we can be a living sacrifice for Jesus. We can take some time to help those in need. We can also take time to share the good news with someone. The story of Christmas is also a story of life and light. The Christmas tree. You know, um, in, in, in times past, you know, many times um, the Christmas tree was, well, it, just let me say, the, uh, you know, it's, it's a very familiar, it's a very familiar um, symbol of celebrating Christmas. And from about the 19th century, Christians have long held it as the tree of life. But in the past, we've had an issue with having Christmas trees because we felt that it was, you know, steeped in paganism. But it's just a symbol. We don't worship the tree. It's just a symbol of the life that we have in Jesus. So this Christmas, just let us thank God for the life. And the tree is just symbolic of life in Jesus Christ. You know, and John... Paul goes on, one Paul goes on to say that it, he, he had life, and this life was the light of men. You see that we are dead, even though we are physically alive, you know? But Jesus, this life that they're talking about, is, is not just being alive, it's spiritual life, it's saving life, it's the life that Jesus, it's eternal life that Jesus can give to us. So we have to celebrate that life. You know, we are the walking dead. We don't have life in heaven. Mm. And it's only when we believe in Jesus, only when we accept him, that we can pass from death mm. to life. Okay. And he also has light. He is the light. And uh, this light here, this is like the white light. To me, this is the light that shines that shines into the darkness and it helps us to see our need for him. Mm -hmm. It also helps to light the way. You know, I love to see the beautiful lights at Christmas. I really love to see that. Um, you know, and the colored lights, the colored lights to me shows the beauty and the warmth of Jesus. You know, I remember years ago, um, Mr. Washington had a story about a little boy in New York. And they were riding around the streets during the Christmas season. And they were looking at all the pretty lights. But the little boy had been taught that all the trappings of Christmas was an abomination. So as he drove around and he saw all the pretty lights, the boy would say, that's an abomination. <laughs> then he drove down another street and he saw even prettier lights. And he said, that's an abomination. And then they drove down another street, and the lights were even prettier. And the boy said for the third time, that's an abomination. And then he paused for a minute, and he said, but that's a pretty abomination. <laughs> <laughs> so let us walk in the beautiful light, All beautiful right. light of yes. Jesus. Yes. You know, the story of Christmas is also one of joy and peace. You know, here is my cup of joy. Yeah. <laughs> my cup of joy and mm -hmm. full. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, when the when the angels and the shepherds appeared, when the angels appeared to the shepherds who were in the field, they said to them, "Do not be afraid. I bring you good news, and I will, and this will cause great joy for all people. The good news that will cause great joy for all people was that a savior." was born, who is the Messiah. You know, the song says, joy to the world, the Lord has come. The good news is that we have a Savior, and that is why we can have joy. You know, for some people, Christmas is a sad time. It's a sad time of the year. Maybe they lost a loved one. Maybe they got divorced right before Christmas. You know, I remember when I was a child, a family friend died just before Christmas, and he, they found him his name was Mr. Redwood, I remember that. And they found him sitting in his chair. He died sitting in his chair. And you know, around that time, you know, you hear all the Christmas carols, and I remember hearing the Christmas carol, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen, on the radio. And you know, for years afterwards, every time Christmas came around, and I would hear that song, I felt sad. I felt sad for Mr. Redwood. But you know, 
there is a lot of sadness. There is a lot of sadness. Because things happen in this world that are out of our control. But the good news, the good news is that we have a Savior who is in control. He knows all of our hurts. He knows all our griefs. But he came to rescue humanity. And that is why it's good news of great joy. And it's good news of great joy to know that we can have a relationship with this Savior. We can experience the joy of Christmas more fully when we have a personal relationship with the Savior. You know, and verse 14 of Luke 2 continues that, you know, uh, the angels came to the, the shepherds. And then suddenly a whole company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. So Jesus came to bring peace. He brought joy, and he also brought peace. My little dove symbolizing peace. And uh, we don't see a lot of peace in the world today. No. You know, but Jesus says in John 14, the peace that he gives is not like the world. It's not like the peace the world is. It is true peace, true peace. And that comes, again, from having that relationship with Jesus. It's a different kind of peace when you have a relationship with Jesus. You see, the whole story of Christmas brings us hope. Hope. In fact, it's hope. You see, having a personal relationship with him, knowing his sacrificial love, walking in newness of life and in his life, experiencing the joy and peace he alone brings, through all of this, we have hope. You know, Titus 2.13 talks about waiting for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior. We have hope that Jesus will come again, not as a baby this time, but as King of kings and Lord of lords. And we shall see him in his glory and you know not what? When we see him in his glory, we will also be changed. And we will shine with glory. So that is something to look forward to. That's what gives us the hope. You see, Christmas is more than gifts and decoration. That's right. It is about Jesus. And Jesus, and, and Jesus is more than just a baby. Mm -hmm. He is God. Mm -hmm. And as we celebrate his human birth, let us thank him for his love and for the hope that we have in him. You know, let us appreciate the multifaceted relationship we have with him as shown through these symbols associated with his birth.